Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Okay, so last week or week before last, I shot a video on sheaths for hunting knives. Um, and uh, the majority of that video kind of focused on, um, you know, how well the, the guard on a, a hunting knife lends itself not only to protecting your fingies, you know, so that you keep the use of them, uh, especially when it's cold, dark, wet, snowing, you know, hands are bloody, muddy, oily, all that kind of stuff, but also how that guard really helps you design uh, a well-made hunting knife sheath around that guard because, um, you know, you can build a welt inside the guard and then, inside the guard, a welt inside the sheath and then so that way that that guard right right here is what we're looking at that way that guard kind of rides up that ramp and then drops into that opening there and what that does is that creates a cam so that knife cannot come out of the sheath until enough force is applied to get it to come up over that cam and then come out um, it's a design that's that's worked uh, really well for me for quite a long time um, uh, for the basic idea of the sheath uh, you know with that that welt with the cam in it the the three rivets in the back my friend Ed Fowler taught me that when I uh, mm, probably about five years after I started making knives was in a, when I uh, uh, ended up meeting Ed and he taught me an awful lot about long-lasting sheath designs uh, not only long-lasting but safe for you and the knife um, just a whole bunch of good stuff there so anyway so this video is not really about um, sheaths for knife with guards it's about sheaths for knives without guards okay um, <clears throat> somebody in one of the comments asked me said well hey that's all great you know that's uh, that's all great on how you make a leather sheath for a knife with a guard but how do you make a sheath or a leather sheath for a knife without a guard my first answer to that is I try not to make very many knives that don't have guards as far as <clears throat> you know outdoor type knives um, or everyday carry type knives the exception to that is these little uh, you know that that Carter Necker style where you've got the uh, um, you know you've got the what this design basically does is it takes a guard and it cuts it in half and puts it onto two fingers okay so Whereas with a normal guard, bam, you got that one protrusion coming up and that's what catches your finger and your hand cannot slip up any farther. That Carter style or Carter pattern um, necker slash, you know, I mean, I make them in a, a couple of different sizes, you know, but what that does is it splits that guard into two different places. So as you squeeze, now your hand can't go anywhere and that pressure is cut or is cut in half in between the index finger and your your middle finger and so that works out really well but i typically do kydex sheaths for those and this fellow wants to talk about leather sheaths for knives with no guards so uh, like i said my first thing is is i try not to do it very often but there are, you know, a, there's a percentage of the population that, you know, they, they just don't like guards. You know, they um, feel they get in the way. They, you know, just don't like the aesthetics. They, they just don't like them. So <clears throat> I do make um, kind of bushcraft style knives like that on occasion. Um, in fact, I don't have any that, that I personally carry because I don't carry a knife like that. Um, if a knife is going to, I mean, if I'm going to have a leather sheath type knife on my hip, it's going to have a guard. So when I make one without a guard, and I have carried these enough to know that, um, you know, what works well and what doesn't work well, and that's why I carry the ones with a guard. But anyway, so pretty much when I make a, a sheath for a knife that has no guard on it, okay, like this one doesn't, this is a, a 1095, um, I don't know, Bushcraft 1 or 2, something like that. I'm not very good with names either. What's this one called? This one's called a number one Bushcraft. It's in 1095 and black walnut. Um, yeah. So it's a normal Bushcraft type knife, right? Full uh, height, flat grind. Um, you know, a, a, I, think, I think the thing said it was about 15 thousandths at the shoulder of the edge, which is, you know, kind of a... Um, 
you know, a little bit tougher, uh, full height flat, flat grind somewhere around there, but you can see it has no guard. So, and you can see that the sheath looks an awful lot like my normal hunting knife sheaths for knives with guards. Now, pretty much what I do when I make a sheath with a knife sheath for a knife with no guard, I build it exactly like my guarded blade sheaths, only the welt doesn't have that cam for the for the guard. It's just a it's just a straight piece of leather in there. So you still have, I mean, this is still the same pattern, but I can shrink it uh, widthways because I don't have the protrusion of the guard coming out. So what you end up having is a, now this one's got a, a ferro rod extra on there, but you can see how much narrower that sheath is. Okay, I mean, it's, it's a full half to three quarters of an inch narrower because there is no guard to have to build around, right? But the rest of it, it's the same. We still have the three um, copper, or I think I've got some bronze um, hammered rivets on the back. Okay, and the reason for those is that when you go to, if you put copper rivets in here, oh, I have one. They go in here like this. Okay, so then you put a washer on the end of this and you trim off the excess and then you, you hammer that, you know, and that's what, what holds it on there. So you use copper rivets instead of stitching because those uh, copper rivets, your knife will never cut that copper rivet, okay? I mean, it might nick it or scratch it, but it's never going to do enough damage to the inside of that rivet to make it not hold the sheath together, okay? Whereas with, with stitching, that can be a factor. Okay, now I know some guys barge cement uh, the inside of this and then put it on and then stitch it and that helps quite a bit because if the stitching gets cut, hopefully that barge cement will keep holding it. But nothing holds like these copper or bronze uh, rivets. It, I mean, it just doesn't. Okay, so you can't cut that, right? And then I've still got a heavy, uh, a heavy welt, only uh, if you can imagine... Now this hole is just there for me to hang it up on the, the pattern board. But just take this section right here and just trim it all completely away. So it's just a straight, a straight welt. And then that still gets sandwiched in between in the sheath and then barge cemented and then stitched down and then stitched back up and then finished off. Um, a couple of things that you can, well, okay, first of all, with the knife with the guard, okay, what keeps that knife from going, you know, farther into the sheath and cutting through the, the point of the sheath in case, um, you know, you ever get uh, smashed or, you know, you're rolling down a mountainside and, you know, uh, you know, boulder hits your side and hits the, the butt of your knife. Without that guard, you know, so in a, a guarded knife, that guard is what stops that knife from going down anymore you would have to completely compress and move all that leather out of the way for that guard to be able to, to be able to pass it for that knife to be able to go through the end of the sheath. With a knife with no guard, pretty much what happens is, is the part that holds the knife in the sheath from it going down farther is the cutting edge resting against the welt, okay? So all your force on there is gonna be between the cutting edge and then the, the top of the spine being held, you know, in place on the back, or the, the front part of the sheath right there, okay? So uh, a couple of things that you can do to kind of get, to kind of make this style of sheath um, a little bit more secure in, you know, very extreme circumstances, you know, like falling off of the, the side of a mountain or, um, you know, uh, rolling around. I mean, just, you know, all the, the, the not normal situations you find yourself in is, first of all, make it a little bit tighter than what you would uh, a normal sheath. Now, I'm kind of guilty on making my sheaths, uh, I mean, I want them tight, so that when they wear in, they have that absolute perfect fit. Um, 
but I tend to make them a little on the tight side even over the top of that. These right here, they can really benefit from that because pretty much the only thing that holds that knife in that sheath when it turns upside down is the friction between the leather and the handle. All right, there's no protrusion in there. So make them a little on the tight side. Also, if you can get away with it, with the design and the height of, you know, where you want that, the height of the, the handle in relation to the belt, okay, um, you know, have more of that handle stuck down in the sheath, <coughs> you know, so that just increases the, the sheath's holding power on that handle, which increases the, the amount of security. Um, with these type of sheaths, now I usually buy my leather like a whole half of a cow at a time, so a whole side. So when you go down to Tandy Leather and, you know, you buy that whole roll, it'll say, you know, 10 to 12 ounce leather on the side. Or it'll say 8 to 10 ounce leather on the side or, you know, on the tag. Well, that's, you know, there's still going to be variation in that whole half of a cow, right? So save your thicker leather for knives that don't have um, guards on them. You can either use a thicker welt or even a thicker, you know, overall leather combined. Because remember, there's nothing, I mean, that guard holds everything, that whole knife, or the guard holds the knife in relation to the welt, and that's what you build your entire sheath around. If you don't have that, then pretty much you're building that whole sheath on this pinch portion right here. Okay, because that's what's holding that knife in this sheath, is the edge against the welt, and then um, this portion of the spine rubbing against the inside of the sheath. All right, that's the only thing that you're really basing the entire sheath around. Yeah, this part right here, you know, kind of helps hold it and guide everything to that portion, but this is what you're designing that sheath around. So the heavier leather that you can get in there to a point, you know, the more stable this entire sheath design is gonna be. Um, also, uh, boning, okay? So the way that I make most of my leather sheaths is I don't really bone them very, or bone them at all, okay? Now, boning is um, wet forming of leather. You'll uh, see it an awful lot in, uh, I mean, you see it some in knives, but knives are typically such a simple shape that there's not a whole lot of opportunity to to really form that leather to the knife. You'll see it an awful lot in gun holsters. Um, not so much like, like Old West, you know, speed holsters, but in uh, like concealment holsters for, you know, small frame revolvers and automatics. And a lot of those, um, they will go to great lengths. I mean, you know, they will form that leather and then you can actually see, you know, the slide, the magazine release, the trigger guard, you know, everything very well imprinted on the outside of the leather through the leather. And so uh, wet forming can really help quite a bit. Now, wet forming, um, you know, it can be done with water um, and that works really good. Um, but... Uh, Honestly, acetone works way, way better. Um, as long as you put, the only problem with acetone is that it works really fast. I mean, you can take a sheath like this and, you know, wet it down with this acetone, uh, bone the sheath, and then 15 minutes later, it's dry and ready for, for re-oiling or re-waxing or whatever. The acetone does take some of the natural oils of the leather out. So make sure you put, uh, you know, put something back into them. But boning in, in, in a situation like this, if you were to, um, you know, wet it down and then kind of push this in and kind of crease it and then push the sides of that sheath in so that, um, so that this portion of the handle has got something to butt up against a little bit, that can help. If you're, um, if you're really, really worried about it, <coughs> You can also take like an extra piece of leather and put it inside the sheath. Um, basically something like this to where that portion of the top of the handle has got something as a positive stop like that and then glue or rivet or stitch that 
inside the sheath, okay? Then you would have, you know, the ability to, to base the rest of the sheath around that point instead of down here, okay? Because that would be a completely positive stop that you're not going to crush. You would have to spread that leather apart, spread it apart enough to where the, the you know, the, the face of the, the handle scales could get through it. Or if, if these were tapered excessively, you know, that still might want to push down through something like that. So anyway, so <clears throat> when you're building a leather sheath for a knife without a guard, first, try not to do it. Second, build it out of your heavier leather if you can, if you've got it available. Um, I know not everybody buys their leather by a whole half a cow at a time. Some guys buy it by the square foot. Um, but try to save your heaviest leather for your, your sheaths for knives with no guards. Build a heavy welt, okay? That welt is everything when it comes to these style of sheaths. Remember that you're basing the entire knife on this pinch, or the entire sheath on this pinch point right here, okay? Where the knife edge contacts your welt and the spinier knife contacts the inside of the back of the or the inside of the front of the sheath that's the entire thing that you're basing your sheath around um, try to get uh, as much of that handle into the sheath as you can and still maintain a relation between your belt and the height of your handle all right um, and make sure you still have enough to be able to grab a hold of you know to be able to pull the thing out especially when your hands are, you know, wet, muddy, bloody, oily, all that kind of stuff. Um, make sure you use your rivets, you know, that way you can't cut through, can't cut through and, you know, release your, your belt loop and lose your, your whole knife. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, so like I said, I don't really make very many of these. This one was actually the only one in my finished uh, shoe box of uh, knives with, with no guards. And so um, that was the one that I brought out to show you because I don't typically carry uh, one of these type of deals. Um, if you are building big choppers, okay, so a lot of time big choppers, uh, hang on a second. If you're building stuff like this, okay, so um, this is a knife with no guard, right? I mean, it's got this protrusion right here that kind of helps, but it'd be really tough to build a, um, a cam around a design like this because it doesn't go in front of the edge very much. And the only reason that this goes in front of the edge is because I've worn that much steel down using it. A knife like this has an awful lot of, you know, this design into it except for this squared off point here. You can build the welt. When you build your welt, bring your welt up over the top of this, okay? That way, when you go to sheath that knife, you've got a positive stop right there. It will not go any farther into that sheath, okay? But that's kind of a specialty type of sheath. Okay, so I think that's about it for the, uh, the hunting knife um, sheaths with no guards. Um, how to build them, some good design features on them, uh, limitations on them, um, all that sort of deal. So, uh, again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.